happens to the fish when they're on deck. They go down this hatch, don't they, David? Under the deck. They do, to the fish room underneath us. And earlier on, we had a sneak peek and this is what we found. <laughs> So here we are below deck, right below the hatch that we saw when we were on the deck. This is where the fish get thrown down, isn't it, David? And then what happens when they get down here? That's right. Well, they have to all be sorted out. So the ship's mate, that's the second in command on the ship, he has to sort all the fish into different types and then quite quickly get them into the ice. So what we're looking at there is a layer of wooden pound boards, all being iced with the fish tightly packed together there with the nose, noses to the fish's tails. You put ice on the top of them and they needed a lot of ice on the ship to keep it fresh. That's 40 tonnes that the ship would carry away wow. with them. But we put more ice on, more layer of wood, and then it's ice fish, ice wood, ice fish, ice wood, right up to the ceiling. And we could have 90 tonnes of fish down here wow. if the ship was full. Can we take a look a little bit further down? We can, we can go here? through to the engine room, okay. through this way. So this is the main engine. We're in the engine room now. We've got a winch engine to power the big winch to wind up the nets that we saw. And this is the main engine to power the engines built at Lincoln. It was very, very loud down here. And the engineer had to be in here for 12 hours every wow. day while the ship was at sea. So it was a, a tough place to work as well down under here. Oh, fantastic. Should we carry on through? Yes, right through towards the accommodation. Wow, so this is, I guess, the sleeping quarters. This is, this is what was known as a four-man berth. Four men would sleep down here. And of course, they've not had a wash Ooh. for all the time they're on the ship, <laughs> yeah. which would be two or three weeks on, on big ships. And they're sleeping in the clothes they were working in with the fish on the deck. Wow. So it could get a little bit pongy down here as well. Yeah, and snoring as well. Mind you, you probably can't hear anything with the, the uh, engine noise All the sound of the engines and the propeller beneath our feet churning the water as well. Wow. Well, the cook was the most important person on the ship, or so a lot of people would say, because your meals were so important because we're working so hard. So all of these pans on the boil all the time, the spouts facing away from him because, of course, the ship is rolling. So everything yeah. has to be clamped tightly onto the top That's of the amazing. oven. Amazing. Big pans of this was often known as a pan of shackles, a stew that they okay. could be having as well. So good hearty meals that are going to give them lots of energy so that they can do the job they need to do. Wow. Where would they eat it? In the room just next to us. This is the mess. Wow, so this is where they'd eat their uh, hearty meal. It is. <laughs> so you can imagine from all the cold wind, even frost and ice on your faces and in your, in your hair, to sit down in here, have a big warm meal, a big pint mug of oh, tea. Oh, would feel amazing, wouldn't it? Must it must have felt like heaven. Fabulous. Where to next, David? Well, I think we need to go up to the wheelhouse where the skipper would have commanded the Ross Tiger. Great. <laughs> Welcome back, we hope you enjoyed that. How exciting is it below the deck here on the trawler? We're now in somewhere else which is just as exciting and very important, isn't it, David, in here? What happens? It is, this is the wheelhouse. So this is where the skipper of the ship, that's the captain, would command the Ross Tiger. Great, so it's called the wheelhouse, I'm guessing, because we have a ginormous wheel here. That's right, that's the original mahogany steering wheel for the ship. And of course, today you don't see these in wheelhouses. We still call them wheelhouses, but they're stirred with Almost like a joystick that you'd use in a computer game. Oh, wow. So everything's got all kind of mod cons. Because this looks quite quite technical here, but I'm guessing this is kind of like an old equivalent of a sat-nav. It is, yes. Of course, they never had satellite technology in the 1950s. So this is what was called a Decca Navigator. It uses radio signals around the coast so that the captain knows where the ship is. He's also got something very important to him, and that's the compass. Of course, the compass tells you which direction you're going in. This is the most accurate one. But to keep accurate, the compass needs to be away from the steel and the metal. So that means it could get damaged in all the heavy seas and weather oh, that the Ross Tiger okay. would have. So you have a spare, this mirror, that mirror, and one in the ceiling above our head there. Wow, this is magnificent. That's right. So and this so this is floating in water, is it, David? Well, it's actually a kind of an alcohol, because the Ross Tiger would sail to places so cold up in the Arctic that if it was water, it could freeze, and then it would stop working. <laughs> <laughs> 